Welcome to FPB's Meet the Candidates. This Cable 10 program allows you, the viewer, to hear directly from our candidates. We've gathered questions from the community and now we get to hear our candidates' views on issues that are important to us. Now, this is all leading up to the primary election, which is on May 17th. Today's guest is Mark Barrett, and he is the candidate for Franklin County Magistrate in the 1st District. Yes, ma'am. Welcome. Hey, well, it's good to have you here. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks. So I just want to give you the opportunity uh, to tell us a little bit about yourself and why you decided to run. Uh, a little bit about myself. I have three kids uh, scattered about. One lives in Lexington. One's going to University of Pikeville and one is at Good Shepherd. So we've, we're kind of spread out. Oh, wow. Out. Yeah. Yeah, we're kind of spread out. Uh, we like out outdoor activities. I've coached football since... 93, you know, Frankfort High, Elkhorn, Bondert, Western Hills, and now I'm at uh, Martha Lane Collins in Shelby County. Okay. I substitute teach, and I'm running just to, uh, uh, elected officials to me, like magistrate spots, should just be two years, and then you're done. Okay. So I just kind of want to. So why do you feel that way? Just get new blood in there. Okay. You know, let everybody have a chance uh, to give their opinion or, or how they want to do things. Like, my big thing is whenever we have a meeting come up, if, if I'm lucky enough to be elected, I want to go ask the people in the district, how would you vote? And if whatever they say, that's what I will, that's how I will vote. Okay. So for people who may not know and watching and be thinking, it, well, is this somebody I need, I and supposed to vote for. So what area does the first district cover? Uh, it's, it's, it's spread out. Okay. It's very <laughs> spread out down 127 South towards Anderson County. Okay. All the way down to downtown Frankfort. Oh, all uh, right. Cloverdale area. Okay. Um, so what experience do you have that you think qualifies you to be to be an elected official? Yeah. None. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think that's what qualifies me. Okay. Uh, there will uh, be many times when uh, people come to the fiscal court asking for money. Mm -hmm. Lots of organizations, uh, needs for homeless, uh, the Humane Society, yep. expanded uh, broadband. Mm -hmm. uh, so how will you handle those requests and what are your priorities for investments in the community? I will, handle the, I will go ask the people in the first district and I, I want to do like three houses wherever it may be, and say, how would, how would, how do you want to vote on this? And then just do it that way. Okay. Uh, so currently in, in the fiscal court, what do you see as the, yeah, the biggest issue they're having to tackle right now? Uh, getting along. <laughs> I mean, that's so, that and... So, so if elected, what would you do to help move that along? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not going to be in a meetings forever. Mm -hmm. That's, that's why I would go out in my district and, and literally ask, go to three different houses each time and say, yeah. how would you vote? Go in there and th then you're done. Yeah. And then let the directors, if, if it's not a voting, uh, Charlie Lewis at the park, if he recommends or says we need this, then I don't, I don't know how the park runs. Go by his, go by his uh, recommendation. Okay. So would you say, do you think you get along well with others and you can work well with oh, others? Oh, sure, yeah. Okay. Um, given the ongoing economic crisis, and we've, we're post-COVID, we've got some uncertain times globally, there are some economic issues here. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it's time to revisit the issue of a combined uh, merged form of city county sure. government? Okay. And do you think that would uh, make government more efficient? I have no idea. Yeah. Just I mean, it, nobody knows. Yeah. It, it could and it, it might not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something you would support. Well, sure. Okay. Uh, in our community, we have two different park systems. We mm -hmm. have the uh, city parks master plan and then the county's uh, Lakeview park mm -hmm. plan. Uh, how do you feel about merging the two parks? I'd combine them immediately. Okay. Are you in support of the current Lakeview plan? I, I haven't really looked into it. Okay. I, I'm in support 
of anything that gets kids outside. Okay. And, and I know it's going to be an indoor facility, but yeah. you know what I'm saying. Gets them, out of the house. Gets them out of the house and off the couch. Yeah. Um, well, I will tell you this. It's very expensive, mm -hmm. <laughs> the plan. <laughs> so how would you suggest that, that we pay for it? I don't think the county should, should be over it. Yeah. I think they should have got a private company to come in and run it. Okay. You know, I don't know how, I don't know how you would do that. You either lease the land to them, lease the building to them, whatever, but I don't think the county should be running it. Okay. Well, you're obviously a supporter of parks mm -hmm. and want to get kids out of the house, off the couch. Well, I mean, kids, er people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone. So what do you believe that we need in our parks here in Franklin County? Uh, more t artificial turf. Okay. On all of them. That's expensive, we, Mark. It, yeah, <laughs> but we we travel around with football, yeah. so we're in a lot of seven on seven tournaments, flag football tournaments. So we have to go to Tennessee, we have to go to Indiana, and because they have all these parks with the. Uh, with the turf fields. Right. And I mean, it brings in, the last one we went to was in Gatlinburg. And there were so many kids, there was supposed to be a one day event. They had to bump it to two days because there's so many kids. So that all these kids and families and, and coaches and buses, I mean, they are coming from Detroit, I think it was Arizona, all over. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's gonna boost your economy. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And we have plenty of field space to do that if they just wouldn't bicker. Okay. Um, well, bringing in all of that would mean um, something for our economic development, something for, uh, you know, to yes. help us get uh, that spur that we need. Yeah. So how would you uh, define economic development? I don't know. That's, that's beyond me. Okay. Uh, for a while now, we've been hearing about uh, comprehensive plans, master plans, strategic planning. And plans are great and they're needed, but <laughs> at some point we have to take action. Mm -hmm. So what action specifically would you propose or support um, to create jobs in our community with family sustaining wages? Well, that's one thing is getting these parks going. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's, it's very big if, if you haven't looked into it. I mean, it is a big business. So to me, that's, that's the way to start. Okay. Um, in our community, we have an organization called the Kentucky Development, uh, Kentucky Capital Development Corporation, and they are responsible for a lot of the economic development opportunities here in our community. Um, so would you support uh, continuing to help fund that organization? The fiscal court currently does that, and they split it. Uh, with the city government? Yeah, I can't answer that because I, yeah. I have not looked into any of that. Okay. And then the same with Downtown Frankfurt, Inc. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Buffalo Trace mm -hmm. has proposed uh, expansion into the Peaks Mill area. Are you in favor of allowing the bourbon warehouses to be built in what is currently um, agricultural and rural residential areas? Well, that's, that's where you go out and ask the residents, how do you want to vote on it? If they say no, then you vote no. Okay. Uh, so that answers the rest yeah, of my it's, questions it's, on that. <laughs> that's why so meeting times with me will be quick. <laughs> so in addition to Buffalo Trace, we also have some other development projects here in Franklin County, including uh, the rezoning of Duncan Road. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the new expansion out uh, by I-64 off 127 called the Paddocks. Um, some people think that uh, when we're talking about expansion and development, that sometimes it boils down to uh, development versus preservation. Where do we draw the line? So where would you draw the line? Do you, which, mm. which do you support more, development or preservation? Both. <laughs> How know, would you it, find that balance? It's hard. Yeah. It, that's very hard. Yeah. Because uh, like I said, we are an outdoor family, so... We like to get out in the woods, but you know we like we like to be able to go someplace and sit down and eat or or something like that. That's that's a hard uh, that's a hard line uh, to uh, decipher there. Yeah. You know. So uh, 
do you think do you think that uh, that you would be able to find a balance? Uh, I mean, kind of. I think you can, but I think it it, it, it takes a, a lot of help to do that. Right. You know, you don't want to. You'd, you'd have to get a lot of people in on it. I think uh -huh. a lot of outdoor people, a lot of business-minded people, and see what they come up with. Okay. Not elected officials that you know, have supporters and say, well, you know, I gave you however much money to get your election going. Yeah. So just get people that are not in that. Ask them. Okay. Well, we're talking about growth in our community. Mm -hmm. uh, so how would you define uh, a term that's gone around? It's called smart growth. Um, do you have, as far as sprawl versus infill? Never heard of it. Okay. <laughs> well, um, some people would consider, uh, say, the development out at the paddocks, mm -hmm. which is out on I-64, sprawl, mm -hmm. because it's on the it's on the edge of our you know county. Right. Uh, and instead of building there, that you should build where we already have uh, empty stores, empty businesses. Yeah, I think they should fill those in. I mean, why leave them abandoned? That's, right. You know, so um, and that's that would that would come again with another uh, development versus which is expansion versus infill. Mm -hmm. These are things that, you know, someone who sits on the fiscal court is going to have to face. And, you, you know, you say you will ask the people. Yeah, and there's some there's you're going to have both. Right. You're going <laughs> right. to. Right. And then it will be your decision. That's right. <laughs> so how do you make that decision? You know, just. Get some input from people yeah. in the county and in the city. I mean, it's a lot of the buildings are in the city part downtown. So, I mean, you know, fill those up before you build something new out here and then it goes empty. Okay. Um, over the past few years, it has become more apparent that we need to depend less on state government here mm -hmm. in our community and focus more on uh, private sector and businesses uh, attract new business development here, uh, incentivize entrepreneurs uh, to locate here. So what uh, would you say your vision is for improving the business climate here in Franklin County? And uh, do you think we can come, become more competitive with our surrounding counties? Uh, I, th I think we could. Yeah. You know, it, there again, I, it, that's, it's not me, that's not, I'm not a business person, but it takes the magistrate team and mm -hmm. the county judge to not bicker around and just talk it out. Yeah. You know, get with these business people and see what they say. Okay. You know, I'm not a business person, so I would go to somebody that's in the business and say, what do you think? Okay. Um, another part of attracting these businesses is that we we need to have people here that are willing to work these jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, so what can our local government do to help grow the size and the skill of our workforce? Uh, a little better benefits, I would say. Okay. And I don't know how the local government would have anything to do with that, with a business coming in. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Uh, do you think the fiscal court currently now it's public government is adequately transparent? No. And if elected, what would you do to make it more transparent? Uh, you, you can ask me anything about it. <laughs> I will tell you honestly what I've seen or, or heard or what goes on in that, in that uh, meeting. Okay. That, it, it's county government. Yeah. It's not you know, big government. Right. So obviously, since you're interested in being on the fiscal court, running for fiscal court, uh, there are issues that, you know, they have addressed. Uh, is there an issue that you have followed maybe that if you had been on the fiscal court that you would have done differently? Uh, the, the only one, it was with the park, uh -huh. the, the big uh, facilities they're building. I would, I don't think the government should run that or the county, right. I should say. Right. 
I think it should be a business okay. that runs it. They, I mean, they got the land, just lease them the land. Yeah. I don't think they have any any business running that, so. Okay. But I'm for it. Yeah. Just in a different way. I got you. <laughs> so, uh, kind of wrapping up, what, as you're running, what are the goals for you running for magistrate that you would like to achieve if you were elected? Uh, employee support. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. Okay. That's it. No follow up on that? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to give you the opportunity now to look into the camera, address our viewers, and tell them why you're the best candidate for a magistrate of the first district or why you would like them to vote for you. Uh, I don't necessarily know if I'm the best candidate, but I'm a true believer on you should only be able to run for two years and then let some new blood get in. Uh, I would be the new blood. And then after two years, I would be done. So that, that's, that's about it. Okay. Well, Mark, we sure appreciate your time coming here. I know our viewers are glad to hear from you. Uh, they get the opportunity to hear how you feel and what you think about mm -hmm. our, our county government right now. Uh, I want to remind our viewers that uh, Mark Barrett is running for Franklin County Magistrate of the 1st District. So uh, you get out there and vote in the primary on May 17th and then tune in to Cable 10 for a live election returns. It is election season, people. So it is time to get informed, voice your choice, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.